So this morning, a great tragedy befell me. The Pro Micro on the left-hand side of my Gucci CRKBD unfortunately lost its micro USB port. Now this isn't an uncommon problem for these cheap Pro Micro knockoffs being made in like uh, Mazatlan or Kathmandu or Djibouti or someplace like that. But it hasn't happened to me yet. I got like 10 of them floating around in keyboards and doing various things, and they've usually been pretty good. But luckily, it's not too big of an issue for a couple of reasons. One, this is a split keyboard, and it has a Pro Micro for each side. And as long as this Pro Micro is working perfectly fine, I can swap them around, and whichever one's plugged in is going to take over as a dominant side. In this case, it'd be the left-hand side, and all will be well. Now, you might be thinking, yes, but... I mean, there's a lot of little pins to desolder. Well, luckily, I socket the living shit out of everything. So no, no desoldering required. Just some screws and some careful prying. And I can get this keyboard up and running again with a broken Pro Micro, hopefully. We'll make sure. I haven't tested it yet. Now, ultimately, I'm going to replace that broken Pro Micro with a Elite C, something I had intended doing from the beginning. But, you know, I just never got around to it and, you know, money. So I'm going to go ahead and get around to fixing this and... I'm going to make you people watch. Well, you can probably click off the video by now, but that's not too much of a problem. You know, I, I thought about doing this because there's a lot of little things that I do, you know, with keyboards. And I, I know I need to polish uh, both of the bottom plates uh, up a bit because they've, well, they're, they're neat of it. But there's all these little things I do that I never record, but I think it might be kind of interesting. Even if you know that you can do this, it's just kind of fun to watch. And it's not like, you know, doing like a build log where it's hey, I'm going to make you watch me build a key, or, you, know, de you know, solder shit for like two or three hours. Have fun with that. Maybe an hour if I'm quick. No, no, no. I'm not just going to be posting streams to YouTube yet. Yet. And one of the things I really like about these Elite, or the, the C-Suite cases, is you can just kind of unscrew some of these screws at the bottom. And if I can get to it, come on, come out. Come on, there we go. Uh, <laughs> and pull the whole thing out as a unit, which is pretty cool. Uh, that means that, I don't know, I, I just find it cleaner. You know, yeah, it's ugly. It's like, oh, I can see the screws on the bottom. Oh, that's so, post or what, what's the word? So gauche. You can see the screws on the bottom. Yeah, but I mean, it's the bottom of the fucking keyboard. I mean, how often are you going to be seeing that? I want hidden screws on a part of the keyboard I never look at. It's never going to see the light of day. Because either it's going to be facing the bottom, or the bottom's going to be facing the desk, or it's going to be facing the wall of your display stand. And let's face it, we're going to be showing off those even more expensive keycaps that we all use. You know you do that. Okay, that's the last one there. Pop that up here. And I think these screws are also brass. Uh, they might just have an anodization or something like that on there. But I do want to be somewhat careful with these guys. I think I'll find out here in just a second. So we can just kind of lift you out. And there we go. And then it's kind of like the uh, FR4 plates. Let's see. So next up, we just need to kind of lift out the OLED screen. Hopefully, okay, yeah, I did without bending the living shit out of the pens. Going to happen on the next one. That's really kind of the tricky thing with this. And hold on, I'm going to manually focus this bad boy. Let's see here. This, this is exciting content. This is what this is what you tune into a Shifty Poo 269 video to see. Focusing randomly in the middle of the video. Okay, so now we got this up here. I'm going to try to pry this off with this plastic prying tool I came with my magnetic cables. My old magnetic cables have recently switched brand since I can no longer get the adapters for the old ones. Let's see here. I might switch to something else here. But hopefully this will be less damaging than like a screwdriver or something or a knife. Never use a knife for anything else than being a knife. They're horrible pry bars or even worse screwdrivers. So now we just do some yanking here. Oh, one side came out. That means that the old pins on the other side are going to be messed up. Let's see here. If I can kind of... Okay. I'm not going to be happy with this. We're going to have to do some fixing. But that is why God invented tweezers. Actually, that was invented by Obadiah Jezere in 1732. Before they had to get two large uh, screwdrivers 
and try to pluck the hairs out with the flat heads. That's totally true, don't look it up. <laughs> I managed to get that out without bending any, uh, any pins. Well, at least I think I can get them back in without having to do anything extra on the next one. Okay, let's get the other one freed up here. This is exciting, isn't it? But I mean, I just thought, you know, this would be kind of cool uh, to kind of show off. This is, this is kind of an advantage of this stuff. And let's see if we can see. Let me turn on the autofocus for a moment. Yeah, see, that's where the uh, USB port came off there. And I might try to fix this just for fun because I'm a, I'm a sadist or masochist. Which one is it? I'm both. You know, I, I, don't, I don't discriminate. Let's make sure this is focused again. On this lovely tarnished brass. <laughs> That's my fault. Um, I don't think this brass was sealed. It was done up, but oh well. I have a mother with a lot of antique uh, somethings, like teapots or something, so she has all kinds of polishing crap. So I can just borrow something for Man! My shit's rusty. No, don't worry, here's 18 things to fix and here's the rags for them, they're already loaded up. It's always good to have people in your lives that also have hobbies. So you're not the only one fixing shit for people. Then you can justify your codependence with one another. Okay, so in theory, this isn't even close to being free, is it? There's just one thing probably that... There we go. Was that it? Is everything? Nope. Not yet. There we go. Now we're free and we're going to dump the screws out over here near Benny. That's the turtle's name, by the way. It's Benny. I don't know why I named him Benny. There's not a good reason. Let's see here. Oh, that's going to be annoying when I, <laughs> I put that back together. But that's not the end of the world. That's probably one of the least annoying things about this build. How to do that. This is a hot swappable PCB that I, I soldered everything onto. A different one than the one I did in the how to solder kale hot swap sockets video. Let's make sure this is still somewhat in focus. Is this good content? It's not? Okay, I'll stop then. Uh, let's see here. I don't know if I'm going to edit this too much. Very lightly pulling. And, okay, those can come out all messed up. Now, this one can be a little trickier just because it still has its USB port. So we have to work around that. Oh, there's still a pillar on this one. That's great. I'm trying to be as gentle as possible with this. Even though if I break this one, that means I get to get two Elite C's. I'm probably going to do that anyway. But I can justify because, oh, my keyboard's broken. I can't just pull off the, you know, the other three CRKPDs with the exact same firmware flash to them or anything like that. You know, if people ask me, you know, hey, why do you have Shifty? Why do you have so many CRKPDs? Mental illness <laughs> and a lack of impulse control. No, uh, I don't know. They're, they're kind of fun to make. They're... Uh, they're really kind of inexpensive to make, too. Try not to pull out the switches. Okay. Now, one of these days, I'm going to get the right tweezers for the job. Ah! Ah! Oh, good thing I grabbed my tweezers. <laughs> Bend the plates back, or the pins back in. Plates, what am I thinking? Well, you know, this is after work, so who knows where my mind is right now. Those are mostly decently straight in there. How's this one looking? Uh, it's probably not going to fall off anytime soon. It's going to fall off tomorrow morning as soon as I get into work. Just you watch. Okay, and this is going to the right side. Because this is not actually soldered down. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's push these switches back in there. 
my face off the camera. I'll make sure they're all seated properly in this moment before I put everything back together. He says what he's going to forget to do before he puts everything back together. We're going to stick our OLED in there. We'll make a quick cut here make, to make sure the switches are still properly seated, which they are not. Okay. I'm going to pretend I didn't just sit there and trying to <laughs> re-see all these switches. Oh, you don't want to do it. Hey, this one doesn't look too bad. It looks terrible. Oh, my God. What were you thinking, Shifty? Okay, now we're going to put the working Pro Micro. Here on this side, where's my little plastic helper here to support us a bit? Let's see, are we all getting in there? I think so. A little bit more force, not the end of the world. Switch is still decently seated. And then we're gonna put in our screen. And let's go and give it a test ride before we put it back into its case. All right, now please forgive the terrible line, but we have the broken Pro Micro over here. The working Pro Micro, or the not fucked up Pro Micro over here. And as we can see here, everything is working. For some reason, I have Windows Search there. And we can see that's doing something. What is that doing? What even is that? But there you go. So let's go back over to the area with the better lighting. We'll get this whole thing back together. That would be fun. That's, that's entertaining. Okay. So... I'm going to do the left-handed side first, I think. Move, 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 move. I'll just going to make sure we get you back over here to manual focus. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the left-handed side first. Not really any other good reason, just that that's what I thought about doing. So, let's see here. All right, and now both sides are back together. They're both perfectly functioning, and uh, I didn't have to buy a single thing despite this Pro Micro being broken. Now, you might be asking yourself, why did I just watch, I don't know, however minute long video of a dude taking apart his keyboards and uh, swapping out the Pro Micros and putting it back together? Who knows? But you're in good company. At least I hope we are. But this kind of idea came about because, one, I broke my keyboard, and two, uh, there's all these little things we do that, you know, never really get documented. And something like... Swapping out your Pro Micro is just a, a neat uh, benefit of using a split keyboard with socketed microcontrollers in it. Well, if you got something out of this video, found it even the slightest bit entertaining, please do like, comment, subscribe, even if it's called me a, a, a moron. Uh, I do have a video coming up regarding ZMK. I recently got a uh, pancake up and running with it. I'll do a video on that, possibly even a tutorial on ZMK, but... I'm really not much of an expert whatsoever. Had to have nice folks over at the ZMK Discord uh, fix all my little mistakes. And I'm really appreciative of that. I'll give you guys a shout out again in the actual video. But just thought I'd document this. Like I said, hopefully it wasn't too uh, painful for you to watch. And I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day.